Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Uh, today is going to be a great session. Today, I want to talk to you about the, the difference between living uh, in the two different realities that we can live in. And so I had the amazing Brit. I hijacked her this morning. She was in the office and I turned up and I said, Brit, I've got some new genius creations for us uh, today. And so I hijacked Brit because I wanted to just uh, draw this out. Instead of drawing it on my board, I really wanted you to, to be able to, to, get, to get this uh to get this really clear because there are two different worlds you can live in there she is thanks Britt. big thanks to brett she's she's behind the scenes with uh with chris and and uh and esther and others uh, making making all of our work look beautiful uh there's two worlds you can live in you can either live in a creative reality or you can live in uh in, in a problem reality and and what dictates which world that you're living in is, is what it is that you're, you're focused on and what you're trying to resolve. If you're, if you're focused on your wounded perspective, it's very different than focusing on what you're creating. Most people, most courses, and most personal development give the power to their woundedness. So here's some ways that we give power to our woundedness. We give power to our woundedness because we try to be perfect. We give power to our woundedness when we think that if we have a certain thing, then it will change something about ourselves. We give power to this woundedness a lot. And many programs just reinforce that you're not it. And I don't know about you, but this is what happened to me. I saw successful people and what I realized is that, that I wasn't like them. And what I decided that in order to be them, I needed to fix something about myself. Anyone else engage in this way? And I read books. I listened to cassettes and then CDs. And I walked around doing incantation. And I changed my diet. And I did all of these things. And I got, you know, success at times. And then it would seem to disappear. And then I'd get success in other ways. And it would disappear. But I tell you what happened for sure is it felt like I was fighting myself. Felt like I had to fight myself. And then I went to this seminar about eight years ago. Amazing seminar. The, uh, the gentleman's a New York Times bestselling author, amazing guy. I talk to him all the time. And... Uh, I was invited as his guest. We had met each other on a speaking tour before this. And, uh, and before the session started, he was outside smoking. He had ripped jeans. His shoes were dirty. We went into the seminar room and there was about 80 people there that all paid four or $5,000 to be there. He had no slides. He had a whiteboard with a pen that didn't work. Aircon was not working, and it was the middle of summer in Melbourne, which is way too hot. The, if you opened the, the windows, there was too much noise. If you closed them, we were too hot. And then over five days, I watched him completely transform people's lives. Everyone was satisfied. Everyone was happy. And he took me out for lunch one day, which again, no, no speaker had ever just taken me out for lunch before. And he said to me, he goes, you don't have to fix yourself to have it the way you want. You just choose it. You're not broken. And I never forgot that. You're not broken. You just choose it. You just choose it. And you choose it. You be yourself. You choose it. And it was such a fascinating experience. I'm not condoning or saying that any of the things is, is right or wrong. I'm just saying that my experience was that all of those things were not allowed if you were an amazing spiritual teacher. That's what, that was my beliefs. 
Those things weren't allowed. You had to be a certain way, do a certain. That's what I believe. You weren't allowed to be like that. I had been before that. I'd been to seminars where the speaker was this perfect, charismatic, amazing person who you never got to really know. And they knew things you didn't know. And you needed to change this and do this and all of these things. And then I realized that if we're in that perspective, we're not in the superconscious perspective. And the superconscious perspective knows that you can be any way you want and create any success you want in life. We had someone email us and they're not in this program yet. They're talking about how they need to try to access some Delta frequency in order to heal. In order to be successful, they, they got told they needed to do a, an hour, 45 minute meditations every single day to try to overcome uh, how broken they were, rather than stepping into a new reality, acknowledging that they're creating every moment and that their consciousness flowing on this way and choosing. And it was such a big realization. And, and since then, I've got really good at explaining it. And today, I want to help you explain and, and understand how to have true choices. There are only two orientations that you can live in. One orientation where you're directed and focused on changing yourself or creating certain conditions that mean you can finally be successful. There's something you need to resolve or fix or remove or cannot experience in order to have success. So that's one way. The other way is you're completely engaged in the end result, putting all your focus and concentration on that for only one reason, because you love it. A true choice only needs one reason is that you love it. You don't start with why, you start with why not. You, you don't uh, need to do it for all these other reasons. You don't need to let you do it because you just love it because your consciousness creating this. You don't need more than that. There is no better spiritual experience than having a human one. This is the highest form of spiritual experience is turning a thought into a thing. And that's enough. Creating a new body, creating an amazing charity, creating a movement, empowering people, educate, whatever it is, you just create it. But you get to be you. So you're not broken. You're not broken. It's restructuring that into a way that works instead of a way that doesn't work. But there's nothing wrong with the way that you have it now. And so a really nice drawing is this one, the two structures. Okay. And, I, and I've got this. Uh, this is brand new, hot off the press. You can see Brett's little icon up here. She's still in here doing amazing work up until minutes before this presentation because I came in and said, you know, I want, I want to have this written out today. So we have the current reality. There is a psychological tension to resolve one of the ways you feel broken, feel wounded, feel incomplete, feel not good enough. And there's, there's, there's six main ones, you know, uh, the need the, the, that you're not perfect and the need to become perfect, the, the, the feeling that you don't belong and to find a way to belong. Uh, the, the idea that you're not capable and that you need more information or money to finally be capable, the, the need to, 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 to uh, be worthy and to try to say I'm not worthy and find worth or the need to be good enough, the need to be significant. So there's a psychological tension. Now, you also have a creative tension. This creative tension is, is to pull in the desired reality and you either uh, buckle, you either give in to one of the two. And so what I see a lot in, in our world, and tell me if it's true, I see a lot of people going back and forwards, never able to just create with ease and flow. Please write this down. Your end results, your creation, you should just be able to dance to it, move towards it. It shouldn't be any more difficult than learn this step, then this step and move this way and go here. That's all it is. It should just be easy. But most of us spend half the time uh, trying to figure out why it is we can or can't have it. You know, you think about abundance or money. And we have this weird uh, humanness that uh, we need to deserve to have it, you know, or that we shouldn't have it. And, and other animals don't do that. I don't know about you, but uh, with my two dogs, I have a beagle and I have a Dalmatian. And uh, if I put some, some food out, they will eat it. And uh, if the other one doesn't get it, they're fine with that. And if I get some more food, they will just eat it. And, and they will do this quite happy. They don't feel guilty about it. And if they've had too much, they'll go bury it and have it later, but they'll still come back and ask for more. They're not worried or concerned whether or not they deserved to have another cookie. They'll just have it. Humans have this whole weird idea that we need to do something to, to have, have abundance. So let's, let's talk about some of these structures. We have a self-conscious agenda. 
In the self-conscious agenda, we have some sort of unwanted experience, whether that's a, a diagnosis, it's a feeling of loneliness or a not enough money. We, we don't have enough purpose or not enough freedom or not enough time. We have anxiety, we have self-sabotage, we have uh, a life that we don't want it to be. And then we have usually decided on a condition, outcome or circumstance that we believe is better. Give me a yes if this is uh, the, the way that most personal development healing and therapy starts. I have an unwanted experience and this would make my life better. If I just had a new car, everyone would think I was awesome. If I just made more money, then I would be free. If I just uh, had a better relationship, if I didn't have this back pain, if, if, if. We have an unwanted experience and we give all the power to some circumstance and we have an action to resolve it. And it seems pretty logical. And to the self-conscious, this is completely logical. However, we also have an unconscious. Now, the unconscious wants something very different. The self-conscious wants quality of life. It wants new things, whereas the unconscious just wants to stay alive. The unconscious just wants to survive. And in order to survive, the unconscious has decided that it's already found a way to survive, so it's not going to look for any other ways. And it's created a belief. And the belief is that I should keep things the way they are. Even though toxic shame hurts, you don't die from it. Even though scarcity isn't abundance, you don't die from it. Even though being in an abusive relationship, you still are alive. Can I get a yes if you get that? The unconscious just goes, did we survive it? Yes. Okay, let's keep doing it. And so that there's an unconscious egoic belief. And this belief has an action to not change how it is. So this is aiming at a condition, outcome, or circumstance that is survivable. So however it was that you decided it should be, you continually want to survive that. So what you'll do is you'll create what's called isomorphic experiences, which is experiences that completely match experiences you've already had. Maybe you had an over-controlling mother. So you find yourself with a boss who just controls everything that you do. And you spend your lifetime saying, I wish I had freedom, but you're so scared to not have that freedom. Maybe you decided at an early age that, you know, you, money would cause give you freedom, but you didn't grow up around money. So you keep finding circumstances where you don't have what you want, thinking if you could just change. You continue to create the same circumstance. You either create them in yourself or you outsource them. Continually, there's something you don't want, something you do want, and you change the characters, you change the circumstances, you change the people, but it's just Groundhog Day. Your brain has found a way to survive and it just repeats it. It's isomorphic, isolated, but a morphic generated field. It's the same thing again, 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 just different people, same experience. Who agrees with that? Same experience. And sometimes we import these experiences from family. And, you know, we talk about that in the family constellation work with Bert Hellinger, but, but, but we just try to keep finding the same experience. And then people wonder, why is it I can't have freedom? Well, freedom's not safe. But I don't like not having enough money. I don't care if you don't like it. Your unconscious knows that it can survive it. So it'll keep finding it. You see, maybe you couldn't have freedom. Uh, and then you go create a really good job. And then your uh, husband or wife gets sick. And so now all of a sudden you have to take a second job. So even though you're making more money, you still don't have the freedom. So you create the same experience you always had. Whew. And so the truth is, is there's really good reasons why we don't have what we want. And that's because in our current reality here, we have the unwanted experience, but also an unconscious egoic belief. The unconscious egoic belief is action to not change. The unwanted experience is to resolve and to try to change. One aspect of you wants it to be better. The other aspect of you just wants what's survivable, which is to keep it the same. And so what happens in this structure is as you move forward towards your desired reality, it's like there's a rubber band holding you back. Every step you take increases the tension to pull you back to here. I'm going to create such a great graphic with this where this person moves and you watch the, the tension of this rubber band get bigger and bigger and bigger. But you guys get it. You see that? As you move closer to the freedom, to the money, to the whatever it is that you have uh, believed that will make the, the world better or different, it's in direct conflict 
making something better is in direct conflict with it staying the same. Can I get a yes if you see that? It's in conflict. So tension increases with action. As you move towards what you want, it increases the tension. So if tension increases, if this rubber band, this elastic band, this bungee cord gets tighter and tighter and tighter, what do you do? You want to resolve it. So you resolve it. And that egoic belief then pulls you back to the unwanted experience. Albeit an unwanted experience with different people, <laughs> different situations, but it's still the same thing. You still aren't allowed to be powerful. You still aren't able to enjoy your life. You still have the same experience. So you live in one or another. And so what we must first do in order to make the shift is we must not live in this structure. The way to, who would like to, to learn how to not live in that structure? The first thing you must do is what I discussed last week, is you must rise above it. As the alchemist would say, you rise above the chaotic mess. And to rise above it, what that means is, is you do the core four choices. You choose to have it now so that there's nothing that you're trying to resolve. You choose to love your life now. You choose to live purpose now. You choose to be the predominant creative force now. You choose to have health and vitality now. As soon as you choose to have it now, there is no unwanted experience. As soon as there's no unwanted experience, you're not trying to resolve something. You already are it. When you become it, then you simply ask, well, now I already have it. What would I love? You just ask, what would I love? Not what would I love so that my life is better. You go, my life is as better as it can be. Yes, it does. Joy says, if you have a huge goal in life, does your unconscious pull you back? If you believe that having that. So here's what I want you to get. To the degree in which you believe that that desired reality will be better, will change you, is the degree to which your unconscious will reject it. The degree to which you, you romanticize about how amazing it would be to have this, whatever it is, is the degree to how much your unconscious believes you're not it and will reject you ever having it. So what you must learn is to be it now and then create what you love. Arrive now instead of assigning the power to what it is you think will resolve the way you have these wounded situations. So let's go through them. Somebody steps into life and they get the first way that they might be wounded, which is they code up that there's something that they need to fix about themselves. There's a certain way to be. They decide I'm not perfect. And if I could just have it perfect, the whole world would, would be right. So they make up how it should be perfect. And they're very critical about how they're not it. They're so critical. Anything little can trigger the I'm not perfect criticism inside their brain of how they're not it. They believe with intense anger that they're not it and rage. And if they could finally be it, create the perfect conditions, then they'd have what they want. However, they're never allowed to arrive there because if they were to arrive there, then their safety mechanism, their safety patterning of being not perfect would no longer exist. They wouldn't know how the world is. So they try to move towards this and they find themselves in another situation that's still not quite perfect forever chasing perfect. Somebody uh, who, who doesn't see themselves as valuable. I'm not valuable. 
I, I'm not good enough. I'm not valuable. I'm going to go try to achieve something. And, and that thing will then make me valuable. So I'll create an amazing business or an amazing charity, or I'll start an amazing family. I'll do something to achieve because that will make me finally good enough and valuable only to arrive there with the patterning that life is about not being valuable and finding new ways to not be good enough and new things that they need to achieve to finally be good enough with immense, immense deceit lying to themselves. So much fear about sitting still the worst person to the, 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 the worst thing to someone who has the wound of not being good enough is to be told to have a holiday and sit and do nothing because then they're just being them. They're only happy if they're focused on something that they're putting into the world. Don't look at me. I'm not valuable. I'm not good enough. Look at that. Look what I'm achieving. That's good enough. And so you watch this woundedness. You watch it continually show up and you ask yourself consistently, the person who, who really truly believes that they're not worthy. I'm not worthy. I must be needed. I must be needed. If I could be needed by others, when I was needed by mum or dad, I got seen. When I was needed, I got treats. When I was needed, I got looked after. When I was needed, I was praised. I need to be needed. I must be needed. They spend their whole life looking after everyone else to be needed and then wonder why they don't get what they wanted. Chris, I've helped so many people. I've been a great mom. I've been an amazing dad. I've helped all these. Look at all this help. I've done all this help. Why am I not rich? What? Because you've been so busy just trying to be needed. And so you watch this consistently play out. The scariest thing to that person is for no one to need them. So if they, if they were to just be completely rich and be the one that was needing help from others, holy moly. I say to them, you're going to have five or 10 staff and they're going to help you. They say, they'll help me. You can't help a helper. And you watch it. I watch it. I see it. And so step one is to arrive first. Arrive first. You must do what we talked about uh, in, in the session around the core four choices. You must do that. You must learn to arrive. Once you arrive, then you can ask yourself, what is it that I would love to create? I'm already loving my life. You love your life now. I'm already uh, living my true nature and purpose. I arrive. Once you're completely in that, then you ask a different question. You ask, what is it that I would just be so enjoy to manifest and create just because I'd want it? Just because I'd want it. So there's three other core sabotaging beliefs I talk about in the book. The next one is that they don't belong. Their core wound, they feel rejected that they don't belong. They, they, they say they're going for things, but what they're really doing is trying not to be re rejected, continually putting themselves in circumstances to feel like they don't belong. Always trying to find why, how do I belong? How do I belong? Consistently either rejecting people, moving to new places, consistently putting themselves in different situations where they just feel like they don't belong, trying to finally belong, trying to finally belong. They will, they will literally try to be so unique you watch them, they'll dress in a certain way sometimes, they will do certain art sometimes, they, they, they continually create the experience of not belonging, not fitting in. Please don't reject me. Do you like me? Are you sure that you like me? What if I was like this, testing how much they are actually liked? How much can I push? How much can I stretch? Will they reject me? Trying to find rejection again and again and again, trying to find abandonment again and again, and you see it. And that's the game they're actually playing. You watch the unconscious game just play out. The next one, I'm not capable. I'm not capable. That I'm not capable. They literally do not think they have enough resources to be able to achieve what it is they want to achieve. They, they, they want to do these things, but they always have not enough time, not enough money, not enough intelligence. There's something that they don't have enough of. They never have enough of. For this person to actually be told, trust yourself is the scariest thing though just just make it up just trust it what do you mean i need a degree a certificate i need a way to do it i must be told how it is i know i don't have enough money i can't just go start i don't have enough i never have enough and they will find ways if they have enough money they will not have enough time you see i i see this one manifest a person finally gets enough knowledge and then their 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 child gets ill or something happens that that means now they don't have enough time they've got to go deal with this there's always something that they don't have enough of. 
there's always something my dad had my dad has this pattern and i love him love him so much but you know it's interesting to watch it and then the last one uh that, that i haven't talked about is uh that that i'm not significant there's there's i've always been overlooked i'm invisible why doesn't anybody see me i'm insignificant i need to be seen don't get seen and so their wound is but the, the, the worst thing is to actually be seen they, they will do some amazing things, but no one will ever be able to see them doing it because if they were to finally be seen in the way they want to be seen, the world that they created doesn't exist. And so there's this never ending chase to finally recapture what it is that we felt we have lost. And then what happens is, is because of this, a whole industry sprung up saying, you need to fix these things. But what they don't realize is every single one of these created the superpower, created a superpower. The person who feels that they're not perfect, they are able to see perfection. They're able to see how it is. The best leaders, the best creators, the, the you know, that can see it as it should be, have the wounding of it not being perfect meticulous, create things with just precision, just total, just, just, they create it amazingly, amazing. It's such a superpower. The way that they've coded up that is their superpower. The person that's always trying to find worth or be needed. They are the best supporters and the best friends on the planet. They know how you're feeling before you know. They are so tuned into being needed. They know what everyone needs. They're, the, they're some of the best leaders I've ever seen. The best. They know what other people need like that. They know. The person that, that wants to always experience himself as valuable by achieving a lot, they know how to position things that make them look good. They have been so obsessed with creating things, with, with being an achiever, that they're able to push things out into the world and have people praise it. It's incredible to know every single one of these is a superpower. The person that feels like they're never capable, don't have enough, they have so much knowledge and the ability to go get resources. You wouldn't believe. They know how to go get more money than you could imagine. They know how to go get other people's time. They know how to get all sorts of education. They are so good at hoarding education and time and resources. They have it all. They're so good at it. The person that doesn't that doesn't belong, that always feels that they're going to reject, they understand emotions like none of us, uh, the rest of the rest of the wounding, don't understand. They are the ones that create the best artwork, the best poetry. They they know how to be tuned into emotions like no one else. And it's incredible for us to acknowledge there's nothing broken in these. There's nothing broken. So what we must do is learn to rise, to have it now, and then to choose. So what would it be like right now for you to live in a creative reality and to ask yourself, what would you love to create for no other reason than you would just love it? Mm -hmm. We're going to do a little meditation and uh, it's called Blue Mist. And the Blue Mist Meditation is a favorite. Rochelle is going to be taking you through it again tomorrow for those of you who make it to the, the live meditation. There's a few different ways you can arrive uh, at this land of plenty. We'll do a nice little meditation. When we do this meditation, we are going to do it under the assumption that you're already living the core four. The core four is the assumption that's already that you're already living a life you love. We are going to assume you're already living a life you love. We're going to assume you're already high in health and vitality. We are going to assume that these are already true because when you really look at it, they can all be true whenever you choose them to be. 
And then we're going to engage our superconscious and say, now that I am living my true nature and purpose, now that I really, I really feel like I am the predominant creative force, when I feel health and vitality, if and when these are all true now, what is it that I would choose to create with my life? Does that sound good? If I had all the money in the world, if I had all the energy and abundance and time in the world, what is it that I would start creating today? Would I create a new home? Would I create uh, family experiences? Would I create an amazing business? What is it that I would choose? See, the assumption that we're not already it keeps us in the wounded orientation. The assumption that you're not already perfect, that you're not already good enough, that you're not already worthy, that you're not already it, that assumption leads you down to what is known as a negative vision. It's a vision that's only there to try to fix something that you feel is incomplete about yourself. And all you do when you do that is give the power to the problem. Give the power to the the wound. Function, know your wound. Behavior is the highest form of communication information. And third, every aspect of your consciousness has an intended positive outcome. There is a positive outcome. You're not some, you're the, the ego is not the enemy. It is not. There is an intended positive outcome. Every single behavior has an intended positive outcome. And what's interesting is, let's say at age two, uh, you, you wanted to feel needed by dad. Because if you felt needed, you felt like you, was, you were loved by him. And if you were loved by him, you were protected. That sounds like it was a really good thing. But now at age 33, you're still trying to be needed and, and trying your best to just be needed by everyone instead of looking after yourself, denying yourself. And what we need to let this little one know is job well done. You, you, you survived. You got the love and attention or whatever, you survived. Job well done. The, the job's over. You know, it's like a kid got on this uh, roller coaster and, and they started going on this roller coaster and it had waves and it was up and down and some parts were exciting and some parts were super scary. But it never got taught that it's allowed to get off. And after 25 years on that roller coaster, you've been around it enough times. You see, oh, here, here comes not feeling good enough. Here comes overworking. There comes inner criticism. And here comes the complete destruction of it all. And back around. Now we're back at the start, blaming others, starting over again. And here it comes again. We've been... So the way to get off is you, you allow yourself right now to open that, you know, that little thing that goes on the roller coaster. You can always jump back on it if you want and get off and go over, walk around over there, which says, I already have it all. I already am all of these things. I already am that. I'm going to live my core four, no matter whether I've got a million in the bank account or negative a million. I'm going to live the core four of everyone is telling me I'm this or people are leaving me. I'm going to do it no matter what. I'm going to live those core four. Who's with me? I'm going to live those core four. I'm going to choose to be healthy and vital today. I'm going to choose it. And I'm going to, I'm going to be that. In spite of what anything's out there, I know that there's, everything's created twice, internally, externally. I'm going to be it. I'm going to act as in, in alignment with it. And then I'm going to ask myself, what would I love? What would I want to put my heart into that I'd love to see manifest? And then you'll, then you'll take action towards that for no reason other than you just love to be a creator, joy, an artist, to play with it. And you'll get, get, it, get it twice. You'll get it now and you'll also get the result.
there's no benefit of playing in the wounded structure. There's just no benefit to not being happy now. There's just no benefit to denying that you're healthy and vital enough and that you want more of it. There's no benefit to deny your happiness, you're living a life you love. There's no benefit to being a victim. There's just no benefit. And so it's time for us to first arrive and then go and find at least one true choice. We only need one. So if you're just starting out, you, you, you know, living the core four is going to be big enough. When we go into it, we're going to find just one thing, just one today that you would just love to create for no reason other than you would just love it. Just one. Because you already have it all. So let's find one today. Mm -hmm.